All right, Coach, solid, solid victory at Western Oregon. Went on the road, held the Western Oregon. They were uh, you know, five wins in a row, the hottest team in the league, and you uh, held them to, to just three points. Was that your most complete defensive effort that you've put together uh, for the year? Statistically, it is. Statistically, the, the ability to go in there and to hold them to 211, points, or 211 yards, uh, it, it's significant when you're trying to play a game, especially in that weather, to have great defense. And so we, try, we pride ourselves on being a strong defensive unit to see those guys do that and um, you know, obviously win the turnover battle. You know, I, I, I'm pretty proud of where they're going, the growth that's happening. You know, um, you know, Brian Wilmer, Peter Moore, Bo Beatty, Matt Johnson, you know, Gabe Heiger, Kyle Shoemaker, defensive staff, still an outstanding job of what we talked about is just not fatiguing, teaching the film else. Um, you know, keeping that vision ahead of these young guys, how to grow and, and get after it. So, yeah, it's a real testament to the hard work that they have done as a staff and uh, just a testament also to the players. So just taking the coaching and continuing to believe and, and just having a real growth mindset. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud of their, their progress. And then not knowing who you were going to – face at quarterback, did that make preparation any tougher? Uh, you know, because not unsure about the status of, of Von Appen and right. how you ended up playing two guys uh, that weren't him. What, how did that affect right. your preparation for the game and how happy were th with you were the way with the way your defense adjusted? Well, that, that was it. You had to put a lot on their plate this whole last week because they said you had to get uh, two game plans a bit, uh, uh, available to be uh, played out. So that was a lot of taxing. Um, Information on the players throughout the whole week. Uh, it does split the rep time. Are you playing against a, you know, Von Appen, which is an extremely dynamic running quarterback, and then also are you where you playing against Trey, the new quarterback, and then they brought in Ryan, the younger quarterback. So there was a lot during the game you had to figure out. I mean, tendency wise, you don't have any tendencies to really go off of, so you had to be able to dial it in and, and stay abreast of what's happening. So our players. And the coaches able to communicate well, figuring it out. What do they ha think they have on us? What do they want? Uh, it's, it's significant uh, to, uh, about our staff. We don't do that. Coach, looking at the offense, not one of your biggest outputs, but uh, you had three really big plays. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you take me through those plays and what they meant to the team? Well, you know, in a game like that, the offense going against one of the best defensive lines in the whole league, it, it's. Uh, we knew going in, we need to make some, we need to make plays, we need to move the ball when, and, and be patient. It, it was okay to punt in a game like this. So to have uh, those uh, three passes that are over 30 yards to move the chains and then also put us in the red zone opportunities and to come away with points when you're in the red zone, that's, 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 uh, that's good offense. That's really good offense, you know. Um, you know, we talk about everybody likes the big stats, love the big scoreboard, but, you know, when you're trying to win a game, you know, and you, when you're trying to put it all together for a team win, that's very significant. So, you know, uh, Coach Carlton and Coach Byers and, and the entire office of staff did a fabulous job of just, just being patient with the guys and making the corrections, making the protection adaptations that had to happen. But that's where uh, I like this team, how they're com developing, because they're, they're catching the vision to, to win team football games. And that's everything you want when you're playing this game. Uh, and, you know, we, we talked previously about, you know, is there is that um, – that me attitude, that, you know, that highlight mentality. They all, everyone wants to be on the ESPN Saturday Night Reel. Um, but, you know, the bottom line, everybody wants to win. You know, everybody wants to win the game. You win it by playing team football. And our offense did their role uh, very well in, in helping us get this victory. And with that, uh, Nick, uh, you know, it, the big numbers would be, you know, a lot of people would look at 7 for 26. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe from what you said, the big stats are the zero interceptions, right. the big plays. Right. Um, you know, get throwing the ball out of bounds when there's nothing there, and, right. and getting another play going in a in a close game like that. Right. Well, and that so that, I mean, it brings up just just how the, the team was dialed in to to say, hey, let's let's play winning football. Let's just play good, solid, fundamental football. So Nick being able to orchestrate the offense back there, throwing it away when he had to throw it away, taking care of the ball when he had to take care of the ball. You know, it, they said it was okay to punt in that game. So you know, let's just make sure we uh, in, a, in the sloppy weather that it was. Uh, let's just make sure we take care of the football and let's just play good defense, which you know that puts together a good team win. And going off that, you talked about Jamie hitting four field goals. Just talk about your special teams and the development of them and how you feel like they're going to uh, hopefully catapult you guys to a couple wins over the next two weeks. Right. Well, yeah, that, and this, it's a big part of the game. It's a, it's a football play. And we, we talked to them on Friday night in the hotel to say, especially with, with special teams, knowing what the weather would be like, that it's it's probably gonna, it's going to play a more prominent role when you have a wet weather game like that, 
and it's a football play. And sometimes, you know, you know, players can can think that there's less significance because it's not an offense defensive play. But it, it, you know, there's guys, there's eleven guys out there. They're all in helmets, shoulder pads. There's a football being tossed around here, so that's a football play. So we're trying to train up great football players, and so. Um, so when they went out there and they played, you know, their eyeballs out, man, they got after it. And that was huge when it came to the field position. So, you know, Jamie being able to come away with those clutch uh, field goals and uh, knowing that, man, you're in the red zone, you got to take advantage of those points. And there are moments there, but, you know, I think there's a, the, the natural inclination that says, hey, go for it on fourth and, on, on fourth and one. You know, go and say, you know, this is play good football right now. And uh, that really paid off in the whole game plan coming together. And coupling on that, Dixie State has a really good returner. He's returned two for yeah. touchdown, one against you guys, one last week. Yeah. Uh, how are you guys going to contain him? Well, uh, we we'll work real hard this week. But yeah, the, Dixie's solid with athletes, and um, they're a great football team. And they they've been playing some hot football, watching their film. I mean, they they have they have they too have gotten better and better and better since the last time we played them. Uh, and so yeah, we're going to have to our hands full when it comes to coverages this week, and you know we're going to make sure. Um, we're going to get back to the fundamentals when it comes to special teams and everything we've got to do to be right with our coverages or protections and understand that's a football play. So we need to be ready as football players. Coach, uh, I know you don't want to look back, but uh, i got to ask a question. Mm-hmm. First time you played Dixie State, they uh, they recover a, a fumble for a touchdown that, right. that drastically turned. I mean, you guys were in control. Um, you end up losing that game by two because they block a long field mm-hmm. goal attempt. How much do, have you been looking forward to, one, maybe getting a little bit of revenge on this, and two, let's say that fumble does not occur and you run the clock out, win that game, how much does your season change? Well, <laughs> I love to be able to say what-if game. And, yeah, what if we won every game? <laughs> so <laughs> the thing about it is that it, what, I, what I've taken and the team's taken from that is it was a, uh, it was a heartbreaking loss because you saw that we had – we had we were up two scores, and you know you see how the game can flip. We look at that though as a real significant learning moment, and that's just how you have to take it because and it's changed how we've prepared as team as a as a staff, how we've prepared as a team. So um, what other people would say, man, what a bad moment in history. We look at it as a, you know that's a great growth moment for us, and it's changed how we prepare. It's changed how we think through games. Um, and it's especially changing you know, with with uh, Western Oregon. You know, we're up two scores, and I'm telling you what, there's no one quitting. There's no one saying, "Hey, turn down the dial." Everybody's keeping the pedal down. So, would we have had that mentality this week, this past week, if we if we had beaten Dixie? I don't know. I don't know. But I know this: we learn from that and we move forward. And that just shows you that we, you know every team can be beaten in this league. And there's a lot of good football players in this league, a lot of great coaches in this league. And so um, you've got to be able to play for the full 60 minutes and then keep the pedal down. So um, all in all, moving forward with it, coming back, you know, I don't really think much about revenge when it comes to Dixie. I think about it's another opportunity to play. And, and so we just want to go one know this week. We're going to do everything we can to work hard and, and prepare a great game plan for Dixie. You've got to go on the road again and uh, know that it's, you know, they're a team that wants it just as bad as I think we do. And then what, what jumps off the tape is something that you your team's doing really well, uh, especially over these last two games, and maybe something that you know you could see that you still need right. some work even though you're, you're winning games. Right. Well, I'd say the old line particularly is is being able to create some of those gaps from there to move. And they're able to um, create you know starting to create some running yardage where going in earlier this season, you know, especially maybe having a little bit of the hangover from the fall, the previous year, you just kind of expected the rushing yardage to happen. Um, you know, they've been working really hard all the time. And so Coach Slater and Coach Byers are, are putting together a significant run game plan. Um, and our O-line has just changed the mentality. They're very aggressive now, uh, understanding this league that you're going to see um, big D linemen every week. So we, we know that running the football is hard work, and uh, they've done a good job of getting better with it. I think on defense, I'd say this is that just, uh, you know, pass coverage-wise, I feel like our, our, our corners and our, and our safeties – and our you know linebackers are doing a great job of fitting uh, a lot of different passes. You know, be able to come away with the interceptions we did last week um, is a real testament to what they've done as far as understanding where they need to fit in coverages, um, how they need to anticipate with the quarterback, what he's looking at. So their film study is really paying off. And then lastly, I'd say you know you go back to Dixie giving up that touchdown with a kickoff. 
um, you know, our coverage teams have really woken up to understand is that that's not a gimme play. And, you know, that's part of the learning. And I think if you want to play championship level football, which we want to do here, our big goal is to be a national prominent player as a better program, you need to understand that that's the, all three phases matter. And you better be technically sound and you better be hungry than the guy in front of you. What, uh, heading into this week, what, do you, what would you say is the, the most important matchup uh, unit-wise between you and Dixie State? Well, I, I, they're all important. I, I'm just off the tape watching it, though. You see Dixie's offense. It's just lighting it up. And they're doing an amazing job of using all their weapons, spreading the ball around. Uh, their quarterback's really beginning to feel um, his stride, what's going on there. I thought the O-line, watching in particular his last uh, game against Simon Frazier, is doing a good job of opening up holes to, to get the run game balanced off with it. Um, you know, they're running their quarterback a lot more now, and that, that puts a lot of stress on the defense when you have to play 11 against 11. You know, he's not just going to sit back there. Um, earlier in the season, it felt like they, he was just probably sitting back throwing. Now he's using his legs, and anytime a quarterback's legs get in the game, that's, that's, that's a lot of stress. And so, you know, that's, that's a big time uh, that's a big time advantage that they have when they, with that guy running now. So we, we got our hands full. And then that first win came at homecoming. This last win, you had some alumni up in Oregon mm -hmm. attended the game. This is the, the easiest road trip for your Southern California fan base to, to make within the league. How, mm -hmm. how important, how excited are you? What kind of atmosphere do you expect? And right. Especially knowing that you've got APU soccer programs following you on the same field yeah. uh, on Saturday. Oh. Well, I, I, we, number one, we have great fans. And I tell you, I, you know, traveling all these stadiums, um, you know, our, our fan base travels well. And it's just great to see what they do. So I can't wait for them to come out. I'm expecting a big crowd for APU fans. And so, you know, as we always talk about, is we want to have a blackout at home. You know, we'd love to see a lot of the blackout over there too because our fans travel well, and it's going to be exciting to be, to be able to play in front of them.